come before your throne. We're so thankful, Lord, that you've given us this opportunity to meet together in the house of the Lord. We pray that you bless all those who are traveling today and can't be with us, those who are sick and uh, can't get out to us today. I pray, Lord, that you would just encourage them and strengthen them. We thank you, Lord, uh, for how you watch over us, and we pray that we would worship you today, that our hearts would be prepared, and that uh, we would be in communication listening to your Spirit as he guides us in the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. may be seated. Announcements today. First of all, don't forget this evening, uh, we're having an Olympian Youth Hay Ride Harvest Party, and uh, that starts at 5 o'clock, uh, 5 o'clock, um, and uh, we, we need you to come at 5, we'll get you loaded up and get out of here about 5.15. Um, uh, some of the parents and grandparents have asked, um, are you able to come, will you make it for the, if you want to come, you can come, okay? Um, you're able to, to make it. If we have more than we can handle, we just divide it up into two trips. It's not a big problem. We're not worried about it. And, and, and Hank and the crew will deal with whatever you want to do, all right? So um, it's, it's not that big a deal. So um, if you want to ride with us, um, please uh, be here at 5 o'clock. Uh, then we'll go for, if we don't have to divide up about an hour ride, uh, if we do, who knows what it'll do. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there, and uh, then there'll be food, dinner, uh, that kind of stuff for uh, the participants afterwards. Um, during that time, Terry will be here practicing her uh, music for the uh, cantata, so if you're in the choir and you want to sing, she will be here playing through the music and trying to help you get some notes and, and do various things and giving you a chance to sing. So if you don't want to ride on the hay ride and you're in the choir, there will be uh, choir practice for you available. And then at 6.30, uh, James is planning on being back with the hay ride in, in time to teach you the Bible study. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll let you know that. And um, that we're planning on still being able to do Bible study at 6.30. And uh, uh, we should be good with that as well, okay? Uh, Tuesday, uh, we're having a board meeting at 7 p.m. here in the church in the back. Um, and then also uh, join us for prayer meeting at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Um, on Saturday, uh, Terry's having a piano instrumental recital um, at 1 p.m. And it uh, features six uh, piano students, in including uh, Callie and Sarah Helm. And uh, Rita will also play her flute. And then... Um, uh, Miss Jenny's grandkids will be playing in that as well, and so uh, quite involved in uh, uh, some of your church uh, folks here. Um, you're, you're openly invited for, for half an hour, hour's worth of music to enjoy yourself uh, and to have a little party, and then afterwards uh, some refreshments. And uh, so if, if you can come, uh, please uh, uh, make the appropriate time, and then... Uh, we have a sign-up sheet for that. We're not trying to put pressure on you, but uh, we'd like to just encourage you to come. So if you can come, um, I don't know why I hand to you first. <laughs> sign up, Terry. Are you coming? Um, yeah. <laughs> No, uh, if you can come, that would be nice and to encourage these young people as they're practicing their music and taking care of things. Then at 4 o'clock, um, we need to be here. Please don't be late. 4 o'clock, we're leaving to go to the corn maze here at 4 o'clock. Um, and, uh, and Andrew, that's, take note that that's changed because we were going to be here at 3, but they changed the time for the corn maze. I wasn't at the last meeting to know why they changed it, but I thought it was awfully early for going through the corn maze in the dark. They were going to need to be a little bit later, so I think that's why they changed it. But yeah, we're usually, usually arriving there at dusk, and it's only 40 minutes away. It's typically done on Friday and all that kind of stuff, but because of when Halloween fell this year, it's on a Saturday that we're going, and that's got things mixed up a little bit. Right. Right. So... Um, plan on uh, uh, being here, ready to go at 4 o'clock. Remember, this is for 12 years old and up, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, this is not one where we can just open it up 
Um, they, because of sending them into cornfields and, and that kind of stuff, they want the, the older ones that they can trust to have a little sense um, when they get lost in, in a cornfield, they don't go from one cornfield to the next one and so forth and instead. There's a lot of things they could do. But hopefully the kids have sense. They would eventually come a little down, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then don't forget, next Sunday, Daylight Savings Time begins, which means that you fall back, um, you get an extra hour of sleep, you need to turn your clock back, and um, then on November 8th, we're having the annual church work day, cleanup day here at the uh, church, um, and, and uh, we'll, we'll give you more information about that next week, but we're planning on uh, doing that on November 8th. We'd like for you all to come out and help and uh, uh, make sure that we're ready and, and things are going well with that. And uh, it always smells great when we're done because of the extra cleaning that's done, the extra cleaning materials, the windows and all kind of stuff. Um, but it can't be done if you don't come help. And so please make sure you put that on your calendar. I know some of us have uh, other things and it'll be a little late, but we're still gonna come. Um, so, uh, you know, please, uh, please come. Okay. Uh, offering envelopes, if you need your offering envelopes or you want offering envelopes, please see John and Judy. They have your offering envelopes if they haven't already given them to you. If you want envelopes, uh, please see them. They'll make sure that they give them to you. Okay. And then you see there church council nominations and other things. Make sure that you, um, you know, make uh, plans for that. If you are interested in the banquet, on November 14th, uh, Friday night, you need to see Eric. Um, that's for the Agora. Um, good food and uh, over at the Best Western and also a good time encouraging missions and salvation and, and things around um, the world. If you'd like to do that, please um, see uh, Eric so that he can uh, make arrangements. Um, I do not get to go to this. Um, it's the same night as the Bethany Banquet the place that we work with that uh, we got Austin from. So um, I, um, I I go to that, the, the Bethany uh, banquet maybe it's time. So, okay. What did I say that wrong or something? Yeah, yeah I did. Got him at the store. Yeah. It's an expensive one too. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Um, now, we have a church directory. We want you to check over this and make sure that your name is spelled correctly. Uh, make sure that uh, your address is right, your telephone's right, and uh, also make sure that uh, if you have joined the church that your asterisk is, is there. You know, make sure that we've marked that, that you're a member. And um, th those type of things. Um, it would help us uh, to make sure that we have this, and then we'll pass it out to everyone so they can have a current um, uh, directory, okay? All right, have I forgotten any other announcements? Yes? If anybody has dump passes that come with your tax bill, I've got a stretch that needs to take. Cost 75, I'll tell you if you don't have a pass. All right, so if anyone has an extra dump pass, um, we could use it, uh, and uh, so please uh, make, make sure you, you bring it in, or at least tell us that you have it and then bring it in, um, because we need to take care of some things, uh, and uh, of course it would save the church some money on the things they need to take to, to, to the dump, okay? Um, so do that. By the way, check out the, uh, the, the bathrooms. Um, things are coming along uh, massively over there. Um, and, you know, we're, we're getting to the end here. It's going pretty quick. Um, better watch what I say. <laughs> uh, I've done so hot this morning. Uh, I better, better be quiet. Um, okay. And, no, it, it looks great. And it uh, looks wonderful. And uh, we're excited about that. Uh, fellows working here quite a bit even yesterday. Try to get there ready. All right, let's sing another song. Let's sing number 530. Number 530, Rescue the Perishing.
our gentlemen to come forward to take up our offerings. Bless Michael if he wouldn't stand and to uh, lead us in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for allowing us to be in your house to sing you praise. We just thank you for all you've done for each one of us and how you continue to provide for us. Share with the world and Lord just thank you for all these things in your precious name. Amen. Amen.
Sophia this morning. Oh, she, she is a wonderful mom. Terry, she's teaching. She's going to play a song for a second, but um, in case you're wondering, Terry is not confused. Uh, she's actually sitting on a, uh, a, wooden, a wooden drum, so she's going to help me out this morning. <coughs> um, this song is called You Are God Alone. to know for sure, to have as a truth, that uh, 
that, that he has saved us and that it's done. And so he's given us proof after proof. Um, we're in the midst of chapter 3, which is the whosoever chapter, where it goes through whosoever does this or does that, and it, it goes through back and forth in the whosoever's. And we're in the midst of the whosoever chapter, and uh, we've been looking at some very interesting uh, uh, thoughts so far. Whosoever committed sin, verse 4, uh, whosoever abideth in him, uh, verse 6, or staying in his presence, whosoever is born of God, does not commit sin, in verse 9. And, of course, uh, there's some others that are thrown in there that day in our, our preaching that we have used. Um, we're now on verse 15. And it says, Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. As I was thinking through um, this uh, uh, passage, and uh, we're looking at the idea of um, uh, you know, proofs of our salvation, and the question comes down to which will you be, a murderer or one who self-sacrifices? One who gives of himself or one who demands of others? It's pretty much the idea here today. Will you be self-sacrificing or will you be a murderer? Now, you might say, well, I have never murdered anyone. But remember that Matthew taught us when going through, uh, that Jesus in Matthew taught us, when going through the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount, he was teaching them that you have said, and that I say. You have said, and I say. And one of the things that he taught there is, you have said that, that you're not to kill your brother. But I say, if you have hatred in your heart towards your brother, you have killed him already. And so here we have 1 John taking it to the next step where he says um, that hate equals murder. To hate is murder. Now, some might say, well, what is hate? What is hate? And the idea is malicious, unjustifiable feelings towards others. Now, wait a minute. Some of you right there said, shoo, I have justifiable reasons to hate someone. <laughs> no, that's not the idea of the word. The idea of the word is when you hate Period. You are having unjustifiable reasons towards others. Towards the innocent, yes. By mutual animosity, someone else hates them, so you do too. Yes. We need to be careful with this. By the way, um, the word here is pretty interesting to me. In, in the Greek, it's mizeo. Um, if, you, if you spell it out, it's actually very close to minus the R, misery. It, it looks a lot like misery, if you, if you ask me. And I'm not saying that's where we got our, our misery word from, but mizeo. And, and when I look at this word and see that it means to detest, to detest to the point of persecuting someone, this is the idea of hate. A strong dislike. You might say, I don't hate. I just don't like them. A strong dislike. A detesting. I don't want to be in their presence. These are things which should be signals or signs that there's a problem. And God's very clear with what he says about a person who struggles with hate. And by the way, I believe that every person in this room, to some extent or another, has someone that pushes their buttons, that every once in a while makes them grumble under their breath and grit their teeth and say, I hate. Hmm. Sometimes, you, you little ones, you say this to your parents. You say, I hate you. Hopefully you don't mean it. But the Bible says that hate is wrong. In fact, the Bible tells us whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Is there any way around it according to the scripture? Are we anything but a murderer? So, if you and I 
are struggling with the way we feel towards someone else. And we hate. This is an easy message. God calls it murder. You know, we've been talking about this for probably about two years now on Wednesday night. We're looking at forgiveness. And how it eats at us and destroys us and imprisons us and, and makes it hard on us because when we don't forgive, we're not allowing um, God's forgiveness that comes to us to be given to another. God wants me to be the type of person who is so loving and so kind that even when people wrong me, I get past the point of hate to loving them. I give of myself. Now, I want to tell you that I've seen some interesting things over the years. I coach, uh, you know, children. You know that. As one of the outreaches as a part of your ministry, I coach children. I work with them and I teach them and I try to, to teach them and, and use sports to implement godly character. In the process of this, over the years, you can play against some people that you really, really don't like who play on the other team. Maybe you thought that they were a bad person. Maybe you thought that they were dirty. And, and maybe during the time they played the game in a dirty way. It's possible. But you really just did not like them at all. In fact, you could honestly say under your breath with the grit teeth, I hate. Just the mention of their name. But I'm convinced, as I watch things over the years, you get that kid away from that sport, or you all go to the same college as he does. And what's the first thing that happens when he ends up choosing to be on your team and your collegiate with you? Do you hate him any longer? Why not? Why not? Maybe, and this is the honest truth, maybe now that you've gotten away from the coach that teaches dirty tactics, he's not playing dirty anymore. Or maybe you just got to see that there's more to this person than what you gave him credit for. Or maybe you found out he really wasn't as bad as you always thought he was. But you have to get past the hate to get to that point. And I've met a lot of these kids over the years. A lot of these type of kids that you just, you growl under your teeth, I can't believe they're doing that. I can't believe the coaches are allowing that. I can't believe. I've met a lot of kids over the years. But I have witnessed every single time when they went off to college with some of our kids, that our kids come back and talk about how great a person that one is. When we hate folks, we're not doing what God wants us to do. We're murdering them. Sometimes our hatred causes us to murder their character. Did you know that? We talk about them. We try to hurt and injure their character. Hate will cause you to do that. Did you know that, that hate will cause you to, to murder their good intentions? Did you know that? Somebody has a good heart, really trying to do something right, but because you hate them, you can't see it? There's a lot of things that hate murders, not just the person. So we have to get past the hate so that we're not doing away with what God's doing in someone's heart. And allow God to be the one that, that causes a change to happen. Sometimes in us. And yes, sometimes in the person that we're struggling with. But our attitude should be one of prayer and love and self-sacrifice. Not hate. Not murder. The Bible goes on to say here, Mar uh, Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Boy, that's a rough little passage right there, isn't it? No murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Again, remember, 
If we were to read this book as a book that says, if you don't do these things, you're, you're condemned to hell, then we'd misunderstand that. But if we're reading this as the book of certainties, the book that says, look, you know for certain you're going to heaven, what's the number one thing we need to, to get into the place, in, into check, then, that helps us to know for sure that we are, are working on the right side of things, we are in tune with Jesus Christ and we have Him in our heart? What's the number one thing that helps us to do that? Removal of hate. That's what it does. When people see a different attitude in us, then they see the love of Jesus, which brings up eternal things, not hate. Now, in case you say, well, the Bible here says that a murderer can't get into heaven. Okay. I'm not going to spend a long time turning through the Bible. I want to tell you that, yes, in, in 1 Peter it tells us that uh, whoremongers and murderers and so forth are not going to get into heaven. But let me ask you something. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, what happens? It cleanses you from all unrighteousness, right? Cleans you up. Okay, so are you a murderer in the eyes of God? No. No. You're not a murderer in the eyes of God. So it is possible for someone like Ted Bundy to get saved before he's put in the electric chair and for him to be in heaven. Yes. What a huge amount of grace God would bring forth, huh? If such a thing were done. But the truth is that we need to understand that what this is telling us is not here. If you hate somebody, you're not going to heaven. But instead, there's no place for this in God's kingdom. And if you're part of God's kingdom, do you want to do it then? If there's no place for this in God's kingdom, and we are hating each other, then who are we? Besides the fact, you realize you can't have an influence on someone if you hate them. You can't. A lot of us think, that as long as I do some token things here and there, I can prove that I don't hate them and I just dislike them. You know, as long as I do some nice things. Be careful, friend. Grit your teeth and barren and doing something doesn't mean that you, you love them and you're doing what's right. It doesn't mean that. If you hate someone, if you have a detesting of them in your heart, if there's a malicious which to be out of their presence and to maybe even have things happen to them makes you laugh or grin or smile and friend you need to ask for forgiveness and get some forgiven done because hate's a sin and it doesn't have any place in the kingdom of God so hate equals murder Murder does not equal eternal life. It doesn't equal the kingdom that you're a part of. So if it doesn't equal the kingdom that we're a part of, should we be doing it? Remember, this is the book of certainties. I'm a part of heaven. I'm a part of eternal things. So I shouldn't be doing the things that don't match my, my own, my father, already a part of this passage here. I shouldn't be doing those things. I should not be murdering people. Instead, we should just keep our mouths quiet and pray for them. Not worry about our testimony and our struggles, whether they're tearing us down, but pray for them. Realize that oftentimes when someone is doing the things that cause you to be aggravated with them, in many cases they're doing the same things to a lot of other people. You don't have to defend your reputation. You just need to pray for them. Hating is murder. And murder does not equal or fit eternal life that you've been given. But verse 16 comes back and says, Hereby perceive we 
the love of God. To perceive something is to be able to see it, to grasp a hold of it, to, to reckon in your own heart and spirit. Here's how you reckon in your own heart and spirit. You see, you grasp a hold of the love of God. The Bible says, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Friend, I hope you understand that this is the opposite statement of the first one. But it's using the best example you could possibly find. His name is Jesus Christ. Now let me ask you something. Who in this room would say that you've never committed sin? Oh, not, none of you? Okay, so who has done something that the holy, almighty, all perfect, just, and righteous in everything, God? Who of you can say that you've not done something he hates? Yet, what is his response? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we're still doing the things that he hates. He loved us enough to give himself. Isn't that what verse 16 says? We perceive, we can reckon, we can pick up that God is love or the love of God. Why? Because he laid down his life. Because he made a self-sacrifice. I don't like what they are, but I want to give them a chance to be better. So I will sacrifice what I want. How many times do I do that, Pastor? It seems to me Peter went to the Lord and asked, how many times do I forgive? And what was the answer? Seventy times seven. I don't think that was a small number of 490. I believe that that was telling us eternity. Seven is the complete perfect number. And Seventy is the complete perfect set of numbers. Times each other, you have completion and perfection of the individual. <coughs> See, God is very clear that we are to love people. One of the things that we, we try to do in the sports area is we try to do little things that can make it to where people show respect towards each other instead of, of hatred. Whether it's meeting before and after games and praying together in a Christian arena, praying together and then shaking hands before the game starts, or whether it's having uh, special retreats and, and days where you meet together and have a revival with one pastor speaking to all the schools. Whatever you try to do, you try to get these kids together off of the field to where they can become friends and love each other for who they are. Why would we do that? Because God wants us to be a loving people. Look, there's nothing wrong with playing the way we ought to play. It really isn't. Rough and hard, going in everywhere. If you ever seen Johnny play, you, you see something special the kid in on the ball. He gets kids aggravated. He does. He, he, he played in the championship or to get into the championship game against the best uh, school and, and shut down the best player on the other team, the best player in the league. He shut him down. That kid was not happy and was not playing the way he ought to play in response. He wasn't. Did Johnny Whiplash? <laughs> Did shut him. Let me let me ask you something. Do we want 
Johnny to, to hate that kid. Or to enjoy the fact that the kid was so good. You shut him down and he's just off his game and he's aggravated and he shouldn't act that way and his own coach should have put a stop to it. But, if you can shake that kid's hand and tell him that he's a really good player, he's going to walk away thinking, what about you? Not a hate that kid. I want to shove him down in the ground and run all up his back, but I have to say it. You're a really good player, too. You shut me down. You understand what I'm trying to say? An attitude difference changes the way you can help other people. It goes in the Christian walk. It goes in so many areas. If you'll self-sacrifice, you're going to make a difference in the lives of others. And maybe acted more like an enemy than a friend when they should have been, since we're all part of the kingdom. Acting like they're part of the kingdom in eternal life. You see, we have a responsibility. We perceive by God, the love of God, that He laid down His life for us. That's the way that He chose to deal with what was hateful. He laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So, should our response not be the same? Now listen, I recognize that there's a time for righteous indignation, like Jesus showed when he went in and dealt with the money changers. I realize that, and I'm not trying to tell you there isn't ever a time that we hate. But I would dare say that the majority of times that we Christians think we ought to be allowed to hate, we're sinning. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather err on the caution on, on the side of caution and say, I don't want to be a part of murdering people with my attitude. I want to pray for them. Yes, they get under my skin. But I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to quit arguing. I'm going to be quiet. And I'm going to pray for them. What is your response. Will you be a murderer? Someone who hates and makes excuses for hatred. Or will you be like Christ and sacrifice yourself? Which will it be? Simple message today. It's not difficult. It's not very deep. But yet it's found throughout Scripture. This isn't just one passage. And I've shown you that by quoting a couple of things to you. Folks, we have a responsibility with a very tall order. Because it is very easy to fall into the pattern of detesting someone else. People do things that get under our skin. What will you do? Will you show them kindness, grace, and mercy like you all? Will you give of yourself? To make them better? Or will you just decide they deserve it and hate? And in the eye of God be a murderer. Something unfit for the kingdom of eternity. And if every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. Just a moment. Just a moment. If the Lord were to return today and try to take us to heaven, would you get to go with us? If you were to die in a car accident, are you sure that you'd spend eternity in heaven with God? If you say, Pastor, I'm not sure. But I'd like to receive him as Savior today. Would you just raise your hand and I'll help you? as we sit here together, I'm not going to keep laboring the point. I don't care who you are. All of us have someone that could get our could light a spark in us of, of a bit of anger and hatred. All of us have. How we respond.
hatred and murder or self-sacrifice and mercy. Father, we come before your throne and we're grateful to you, Lord, for the blessings that you give to us, that you have provided to us who have done hateful things. Uh, Lord, you've provided us love and self-sacrifice to save us from our sins and our behavior and our attitudes. Lord, I pray that we recognize that some of the actions that we have at times towards others are not fitting for the kingdom of heaven and will not be permitted there. And Lord, you don't want us to be there as that type of person. So... Lord, help us to change from within even now today. Some of us, Lord, have deep-seated hurts that go way back to our childhood. Others, Lord, are sitting on hurts of, of someone that has done them wrong in a work situation. And many others have been wronged by a family member, whether a parent or a child or, or even siblings. And Lord, we pray that you would provide healing today, that this would be a special day. Where, Lord, uh, even friendships that have been fractured are healed. Maybe not to ever become great friends, but, Lord, healed in the sense of no more detesting, no more hating, no more murder in our heart towards those that, that we've dealt with. I pray, Lord, that you would just make this a blessed day of forgiveness and coming right with you and being honest so that there's nothing that inhibits us. Lord, we know that the Scripture tells us not to bring a gift to the altar when we're hating our brother. Go deal with him have aught with them. Go deal with them. And when they don't listen, Lord, we can bring it, but we have to get rid of the problem in our own heart. And Lord, I pray that you would wake us up to this truth so that our prayers can be heard, our gifts can be received, and so that we can be all that we should be as part of your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. What song do we sing? 353. Let's stand together and sing. All is open if you need it for any reason.
um, through songs, Lord, I just pray that you would um, help us to uh, take the message we heard this morning, Lord, to uh, just to seek and amends, Lord, in, in areas of relationships that we uh, need to, Lord, that we would not um, just harbor just that hatred and bitterness in our hearts, Lord. We thank you for the forgiveness, for your love for us, that you would die on the cross uh, for our sins, Lord. We just um, pray for this evening's uh, festivities, Lord, the, the hayride and um, the, uh, the, uh, the dinner uh, to follow the Lord in the service, Lord, that you would bless the time, Lord, that the fellowship would be sweet and um, that you would keep us safe. And we'll thank you for it. Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming. Don't forget to take a peek at the bathrooms. The teenagers, bring a flashlight tonight. Oh, I'll stress the out of your son.